the video you've all been waiting for, plant friends. The wild world of philodendron. Everything you need to know to keep these things thriving and to get those big leaves that we all want out of our philodendron plants. Welcome. Growing joy. Hello, plant friends. I'm Maria, your new best plant friend. I'm here to help you care for plants successfully like these gorgeous philodendron with me and grow joy in your life while doing so. I am so excited to make this video all about philodendron, probably one of our more requested videos in partnership with Proven Winners Leaf Joy. They are the growers of these insanely gorgeous, insanely healthy houseplants, and I'm so excited to dive in, break each one down, and talk about care. When we are talking about philodendron, oop, <laughs> that's not hard. When we are talking about philodendron, it is important to understand how they thrive outdoors before we bring them inside. So let's talk about this genus in general. There are over 400 different varieties of philodendron that you can bring home. Can you imagine? You could spend your entire life just collecting philodendrons. Now, after this video, my collection will be significantly larger, but I have been caring for philodendron. They've been one of my favorite genus to have. I've always had a wide variety in my collection. Well, I love even you can see in this video, the span of the different shades of green that this plant has, and not even green, right? We have orange, we have red, we have really cool variegation, but I love the lime greens into the really dark, glossy greens. Um, I just think there's such an opportunity to provide different textures and interest in your plant collection with philodendron, and they're so easy to care for. But sorry, Maria, you're getting ahead of yourself. Zoom out. Philodendron, they live in the rainforest. They like to climb on the understory, and they climb up the trees to go find the light. So these are very versatile plants. They're triple threats. Going back to my performing days, they can do so many different things. They can climb up trees. That's how they exist in nature. They can climb up trees to look for light and use their aerial roots to attract, attach and absorb water. They can trail. So we have a lot of people that have beautiful bowls of philodendron that trail over a bookcase, or they can kind of grow like this, more in a clump and a little bit more erect. The other thing that I think is really interesting to note, especially with this wide variety, is all of the different literal textures. So not just visual textures that it can provide, the literal textures that we see. So some philodendron have fuzzy stems. Some have kind of waxy leaves. Some have fuzzy leaves. Some have thin leaves. Some have thick leaves. Then obviously you have your textures of your moss poles. Some are shiny. Some are more muted. Like I'm like, how many different textures can I find within this collection of house plants and I think that's fun. All right, so enough generalizations. Let's dive in and talk about how to care for these plants successfully. These are really hardy plants. I have to say, I have had philodendron in my collection for almost a decade now and I will say I've gone through seasons where I'm a low maintenance plant parent and I've gone through seasons where I'm a high maintenance plant parent and these plants will adjust with me. They are drought tolerant. So if you travel, most of the philodendrons can really handle the soil drying out a little bit before having to water. They are low light tolerant. They don't love low light, but they are low light tolerant. So if you need to put them in a little bit less light, you have the opportunity to. But let's talk about optimum care. So these plants are hardy, but if you want the plants to grow really epic, juicy leaves, like really big leaves, look how beautifully long these leaves are. Look how large these leaves are. Look how interesting these leaves are. If you want them to get really big and prehistoric, if you really want that big jungle vibe, light is going to be really important. The more light you give these plants, the more ability the, the leaves have to grow larger. Most philodendron can tolerate direct light, um, but I would say bright indirect light is where they're really going to thrive. My philodendrons love to be under grow lights. You know, if you put them in a little bit of a lower light situation, they might just keep their, their leaves the same. But I actually have this plant the exact version of this plant on the pole in my office, which has a grow light. And as it's been climbing, the leaves have been getting bigger and bigger. So, you know, you see the bottom leaves small like this. And as you give it more and more light and it climbs closer to the light source, you're going to get larger leaves like this, which I think is really cool. So bright indirect light tends to be the name of the game. They are low light tolerant. I don't advise that. Um, and a lot of them, you'll be surprised at how much light they can tolerate. I have a bunch of my philodendron in a Western window and they really love it. With light, Two other things to note, variegated plants like this philodendron white wizard, because the variegation 
these white parts of the variegated leaf can't photosynthesize to make food for the plant. So often variegated plants are gonna need more light than it's just normal green counterpart. Also, I find that if a plant has colorful leaves, it tends to need more light as well. Um, it's something about just, I guess, the genetic makeup of it, but I found, especially with succulents, but also with philodendron, if there's a very special color on the leaves, that's likely gonna, uh, gonna enjoy a little bit more light too. And the vibrancy of the color will be shown off with light. A great example of this, um, actually with variegation, philodendron birkin is a, it, it was a hot plant maybe a year ago. You like couldn't get your hands on it. Now it's more accessible. This is a leaf joy plant. You can get it, you know, at your local garden center. The leaves will only remain variegated if you give it enough light. So what a lot of people struggle with this plant is they buy it at the garden center. You see the gorgeous variegation. I mean, the stripes on this are incredible. They bring it home. They put it in a lower light area because people say, oh, philodendrons, low light tolerant. And then they notice that all the new growth is green or that you know the existing leaves even turn green. And that's because the plant isn't getting enough light. So if you really wanna boost that variegation in your plants, I highly suggest making sure that they have the right light. And that's why I have a lot of my philodendron under grow lights. In terms of water, like I said, they're drought tolerant. I'm not gonna lie to you, plant friends. I've let my philodendron completely dry out multiple times and they totally bounce back. But the best practice would be to allow for the top layer, like the top inch of soil to dry out and then water again. So with them, it's about watering thoroughly, but not necessarily frequently. So when you do water the plant, you're gonna wanna water it so the entire soil is saturated. You're gonna to wanna to let the water drip out the bottom of the pot. So that's the thorough. You're gonna give it like a rain shower, let it drip and then put it back in its cash flow. Or if you have a normal you know, planter with holes at the bottom, let it drip out. You can leave the water in the saucer for an hour and then dump it. Don't let your plant sit in water this plant is not like wet feet. That means like sitting in water at the bottom, the roots will rot. When it comes to soil, I have a lot of my philodendron potted in normal potting mix for a house plant, but they like a chunky aerated mix. So philodendron climb on trees, right? They are uh, epiphytes. They like kind of a, an airier, chunkier soil mix than maybe an African violet or a plant that likes even, even soil moisture because they're used to having their roots exposed to a lot of air. So you don't want to put them in dense potting mix. You want to just make sure that it's a light, fluffy mix. Most general potting mixes will work. I like to take a general potting mix and mix in a little bit of an orchid bark or a little bit of an orchid mix that tends to be chunkier. I'll mix it in. It'll make me feel like, you know, a mad plant scientist. And that's what I'll normally pot up most of my philodendrons and other aeroids in. With humidity, obviously with all houseplants, humidity is great. Houseplants are going to thrive in 60 to 80 percent humidity. But I would say my philodendrons have never been in that much humidity. They've been in as low as 20% humidity and they're totally fine. As the leaves get fenestrated, if you have leaves that are variegated and if you want big, epic fenestrated leaves, humidity is going to help, right? Um, a great way to kind of give philodendrons some humidity is water your moss poles. If you have them uh, attached to moss poles, you can water your moss pole and make sure that moss is saturated so that the plant gets that um, evaporation from the moss pole. The other thing that really helps with humidity, and speaking of moss poles, philodendrons, a lot of them have aerial roots. So when they climb the trees, they use these aerial roots that don't go in the ground, but they attach to the trees. They can soak up the water. And moisture and humidity will help those aerial roots actually attach. So if you have a philodendron and you've you know trellised it and you notice that there are no aerial roots, sometimes a little bit more humidity will encourage those aerial roots to form, grow, and actually attach. Fun fact, in my apartment in New York City, I had this amazing green wall. Shout out to Wally Grow. They made the pockets that I installed. And I had some really cool philodendron species that actually attached to my wall and climbed around. I didn't have issues taking them off. Some people say that they'll rip the paint off, but that didn't ex I didn't experience that. But I just thought it was so cool to see these philodendron take life and do what they're meant to do in the real world, in nature. And with fertilizing, fertilize when you see new growth, right? I see new growth coming off of multiple of these philodendrons. So I would fertilize them with a gentle indoor houseplant fertilizer. I use a liquid organic fertilizer. I put it in my watering can and I'll water once a month like whenever I see new growth because it's always good to give them a little bit of support as they're throwing off a lot of big juicy leaves for you. With troubleshooting, let's see. 
what are the biggest pieces of troubleshooting with philodendron? I think overwatering and underwatering. That's when you're going to see yellow leaves. If you see uniform browning on the outsides of all of your leaves, that's going to be a humidity issue. Philodendron are pretty water tolerant. I don't think you have to water them with distilled water, but if you see the tips getting a little bit brown, that could be a water issue. Leaf drop is pretty normal if they're the older leaves. So like as this philodendron grows, the older leaves are going to get bigger. They're going to start hanging. It's kind of normal for it to drop drop its leaves. You'll also notice here, this philodendron started out as a little baby, right? So these leaves are much smaller than the leaves that have grown since then. These leaves might start shading this little leaf out and it won't get light and it might yellow and fall off. That's very normal. I wouldn't worry about it. We already talked about it not attaching to the moss pole. I would say make sure your moss pole is damp and I think you're going to have great success with getting those aerial roots to sprout. And then last but not least, getting leggy. So here's the deal. Leggy is when the leaves are farther and farther apart on a philodendron vine, right? So let's take this plant. This is the philodendron silver sword. Obviously silver, it's got this gorgeous um, shiny leaf color to it and it's shaped like a sword, which is why it's called silver sword. It's a vining plant. And if you notice the internode is about maybe an inch, an inch and a half. The internode is the space between the two nodes on the plant. The nodes are where the leaves attach. As the plant grows, if you notice that the internodes get longer, that is a sign that there's not enough light. So more light, the internodes will get shorter, less light, the internodes will get longer. So if you see a plant getting leggy, which means that there's more space in the, the internodes are getting longer, it means that you need to give it more light and vice versa. So if you want a more compact vine with more kind of a bushy look with the leaves closer together, you're gonna to wanna to give it more light so those internodes get smaller. So I already talked about this philodendron prismacolor silver sword. I want to take an opportunity to dive into every single one of the species that you see with a little overview of each one. But before we do that, I just wanted to say a quick thanks to the sponsor of today's episode and the grower of this insane variety of plants, Proven Winners Leaf Joy. Proven Winners Leaf Joy is a grower. When you're at your garden center, you'll know that it's a Proven Winners plant by looking for these plant tags. They like stick out. They're very unique. They don't look like any other plant tags you'll see at the store. It is an incredible grower with a state-of-the-art greenhouse. They are growing only the highest quality plants. They really want to empower their consumer by creating tags that have the plant Latin on them, right? That have care cards. They sponsor these videos and the Growing Joy with Leaf Joy series on the Growing Joy with Plants podcast to make sure that you guys have all of the information you need in order to grow their plants successfully. And they are growing the coolest species on the market. I mean, I haven't seen a lot of these species before, and it's because they're finding really unique, cool species and bringing them to market so that we can all continue to grow joy with Leaf Joy. So thank you. Make sure that you ask for the Leaf Joy plant in your local garden center. So since I have the silver sword out, we can start with this one. So as you can see, the silver sword is a vining plant. You're going to want to put this on a moss pole. You can make one. I have a whole video on how to make your own moss pole, um, or you can buy them now. They come in so many different varieties. The way that you attach a plant to a moss pole, you can do it multiple different ways. The way that they do it is they have these little pins and what they do is they take the pin and they attach it this way. You can also get like floral tape or the gardener's Velcro product that you can just kind of do. I use twist ties sometimes. I'll save twist ties from my bread bags and then I'll do that. But you want to figure out a way to fasten them to the moss pole so it gets used to climbing the moss pole and then the aerial roots will start to grow and attach itself ideally. Like I said, if you really want those aerial roots to grow, humidity is a big part. I love the size of these leaves and I love the silver iridescence. They're so freaking beautiful. I can't even stand it. And it's really unique looking compared to all of the other plants. So that is the philodendron silver sword. This colorful beauty, Prince of Orange, is so gorgeous. The new growth comes in and it's almost pink, which is obviously my favorite color. And then it grows into this yellow orangey. I love that the edges of the plant are this darker orange, almost red. The veins are kind of a red orange too, but you don't see a lot of orange plants. And I really love this one. Prince of Orange, the Ring of Fires, the red ones here, just note, these are very dwarf, not dwarf, but these are young versions of this plant. You'll see these plants in the garden center get huge. So it's cool to invest in a plant in a smaller size, give it the light that it needs. And this plant will take up 
your corners or space. It's so great. And it's such an interesting color contrast to the rest of most people's plant collections. This one is like its sibling. It's This is the Philodendron Prismacolor Sun Red. You can see it actually has some aerial roots kind of sticking out of the soil, which I think is really funny. But once again, I love how it comes in with this bright red. And then as the plant matures, it gets into this dark, rich, like... What color is this? Burgundy almost. And even this leaf has some green, some red. I mean, it's just, it's so beautiful and mesmerizing. And I love how shiny this leaf is. Like that's, that's a sexy plant right there, right? On the other side of that, one of my favorite philodendrons is this lime one. This one is called, yeah, Prismacolor Lemon Lime. My mom, if you listen to the Growing Joy with Plants podcast, you'll see a picture of me holding this enormous lime green plant, kind of like, <laughs> on the podcast like art. That's actually this plant. So my mom has this plant. It is enormous. I mean, it's trellised and it's this large and the leaves are this big. But the beauty is she bought it and it looked like this. And if you give it the light, it will grow. Another thing to note with this is I love the color combination of the lime green and the pink red kind of rhubarbish color of the stems. I mean, that is just, I don't think there's a better color combination. And then you also see the underside of the leaf has that pink vein with the lime green leaf. It is so gorgeous. Once again, not your normal, not your average green tropical house plant, a really fun, different kind of variety. We talked about the philodendron birkin variegated. Like I said, it needs more light. White Wizard, I have this plant at my house and it is amazing. The variegation on this is so consistent. Sometimes what bothers me is um, inconsistency with variegation in plants. That's another thing I love about Leaf Joy. All of the variegated plants, philodendron or not, that I have from Leaf Joy, like every leaf comes out with variegation. You don't get a couple of green leaves and then like one with a little speck of white. It's a freaking constellation in this leaf. I also like that it's not too white because if you get leaves that have too much white in them, they can't photosynthesize and it's, the plant's not going to do as well. So I like that it's a nice, healthy amount of white, but not too much white. And mine is throwing off so much growth. I have it under a grow light in my house. What else should we look at? Ah, yes, this one. I mean, this guy screams jungle vibes to me. What's his name? Ah, yes. The Prismacolor Atabopoense. 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 Yeah, I feel like that's how they'd say this out. Atabopoense. It's a philodendron. I mean, come on. I think this looks like, you know, those dogs with the long snout. What are they called? I don't remember. But you know those dogs with the really long snout? I feel like that's what this plant looks like. And it's just like. <laughs> I think it looks so cool. Um, once again, really different. That's the beauty of philodendron. All of the different plants come in so many diff different shapes and sizes. The undersides of the leaves, purple, kind of like some of the calatheas that I have. So beautiful. Even when you see them, like, if you're looking at the plant this way, you get the purple from the back sides. You get the green. You get these, like, little yellow edges. It's just like a rainbow of happiness. And then you get the red, new growth. I mean, come on, what more do you want in a house plan? Next up is the Golden Ring of Fire. This is the Philodendron Double Edged Sword. This, I think, is so cool. Once again, very similar to the Atabo Poense, a nice long leaf, but the ridges are kind of a riff on a Monstera or the Bipinepeta. I'll put the word on the on the camera. But it's so beautiful. I mean, this is a classic green foliage houseplant with a really interesting leaf shape. It's also nice and glossy. It's a little bit thicker. So to me, I'm going to think that this might be a little drip more drought tolerant than other ones. We've talked about my gold and silver sword. This one, ugh, if you want a grower that is just going to like take off, be pretty low maintenance. This is called the Brantianum. Brantianum. I'm having so much success with this plant in my office. It has climbed so far beyond this moss pole. It has taken off. I mean, I've had it for three or four months and I want to say it's climbed all the way up my wall and it's, it hasn't attached to the wall yet, but I think it's on its way and the leaves are getting bigger and bigger. I love that the leaves are heart shaped. Let's take a moment for a heart shaped leaf. In my book growing joy, I have a whole gratitude practice around putting plants 
that have heart-shaped leaves around your house and every time you see one you have a moment of gratitude for someone or something in your life but i love this silvery variegation on the leaves it's so beautiful it's kind of mesmerizing it catches the light so beautifully and once again it's just a point of visual interest in a plant collection that's mostly green and it is just going to grow like crazy so the cool thing about plants like this that are vining this is attached to the moss pole you could take this off and you could have it trail so i think it's kind of iconic when you have oh i just took this whole thing off accidentally i have multiple philodendrons trailing on my bookshelf like this i think it looks so cool when a philodendron tumbles down a bookshelf right like just, I just think it's dramatic and every every bookshelf needs one. Um, so you can either have it trail, but if you want the leaves to get bigger, I would suggest having it on the moss pole. So let's put you back. This is actually a great chance to show you where those aerial roots are gonna come out of. So you see these little brown bumps? This is the growth point for the aerial roots that would connect to the moss pole. We'll just make sure to shoot B-roll of that after. All right, now it's time to cut to my favorite one of the of the group i mean when i think jungle when i think indoor jungle i don't know if it gets more jungly than this look at this to me just looks like a prehistoric leaf i feel like whenever i've traveled to costa rica or like traveled to more jungle areas i feel like i see these everywhere and the thing i love about this plant is the stems are fuzzy it has these crazy lime green fuzzy boys all up and down the stem. And once again, it's fun to engage your sense of feeling with your house plants. So you have this velvety top leaf, you have the fuzzy stems, you have kind of a waxy under leaf. It's like, it's just a, it's a circus for my, for my fingertips. It's amazing. And then it's got some new growth down here. This one I would not have trailing, though I would definitely put this on a moss pole. But I just think it's so interesting and the leaves look so beautiful in the light. Oh my goodness. And last but not least, a plant that's very popular. I have its variegated variety. This is the Florida Green. Um, right? Is that what we call it? P.S. I just picked up the plant tag for this. This one's called Fozzy. I think it's because the stems are fuzzy. Fuzzy, 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 fuzzy. So cute. And last but not least, the Florida Green. She's last, but she's not the least, let me tell you. She also kind of has a little fuzzy stem, but this is just the coolest leaf shape. I freaking love it. It's also high shine, glossy. It's like as glossy as a gel manicure. Um, vigorous grower as well. I have the Florida Ghost, the variegated version that's like lime green. It's a little bit more of a slow grower, but I know this will grow faster because it's all green and it can photosynthesize faster. It's a climber, so you can put it on a moss pole and I'm just obsessed with it. Another thing about philodendron is that they're really easy to propagate. They do great in water propagation. Often with my philodendron, I won't even prop them in water. I'll just cut off the top and stick the nodes in the soil and they'll root just in the soil. Um, but they're really fun to share with your friends, right? When you get a plant, come bring it home. You can make cutting, share with a friend, maybe do a little trade. Um, sharing is caring. And the philodendron genus just never ceases to amaze me. I love it so much. What's your favorite? Which one are you gonna get? Which one do you already have? Did I miss any? Are there other philodendron species that I should go check out? Please let me know in the comments. I want to hear. Special thanks to LeafJoy for sponsoring this video. All of these plants are incredible. I can't wait to watch them all grow so big under my care. And until next time, I hope this was helpful and that you keep growing joy.